right. Remember, 11 years ago today, Palace beat Arsenal, the only time in the league. 1 0. Is it going to be 1 0 here? The flag is up. Salako is stopped in his tracks. And I must say, at first evidence, he did look offside. Bright. Oh, and right, will he reach it? He does! And David Seaman got his body to the ball, and that was what stood between Crystal Palace and Ian Wright in particular, and a goal. Davis over Humphrey, collected by Campbell, and then by Limper. Arsenal away from home, coming strong in the second half again. But Limper, with this succession of goals behind him, couldn't manage another one, and Palace mightily grateful for that. Nigel Martin stayed upright until he had to go down. Liverpool are just two points short of a perfect start in the league. They looked true perfectionists against Luton. Their passing game was quality plus, but the biggest plus of all was Ian Rush. Steve McMahon split Gazza's nose last week. Here he is splitting the Luton defence. It was Steve Nicholl who was sent crashing there, giving the popular Jan Molby an opportunity to end his Anfield career on a high note, scoring number two from the penalty spot. Molby destined for Barcelona next week. Number three was another clinical example of Liverpool at their best. Beardsley with an Oscar-winning pass. Rush again. That was magnificent. Now, this is the Anfield secret. Pass and move. Ray Houghton exchanging passes with Peter Beardsley. The first division's leading scorer now with 10. Liverpool's entertainment rating, 10 out of 10. This was a tremendous match at White Hart Lane. Nine minutes gone, Gascoigne's corner and Paul Stewart with his first league goal of the season. There's an error, though, from Paul Gascoigne now. That back pass and Alan Cork, well, he knows too much to miss them from that distance. Wimbledon with a splendid record against Spurs in recent years. Take the lead through Paul McGee. He really does hit them well from that range. Identical goal for Spurs just before half-time. Gascoigne's corner, Stewart the flick, Gary Mabbott the skipper with the equaliser. Spurs had much the better of things in the second half, but they had to wait until the last five minutes to get the points. Walsh, so sharp on the near post. Walsh really is the super sub these days. And now Blackwell on Naheem. A penalty for Gary Lineker, who had an outstanding match by all accounts. 4-2. What a splendid afternoon's entertainment. This must go down at just about the best home performance of the season for the Saints. Right out, powerful in the air, eight minutes gone. Queen's Park Rangers pinch an equaliser just before half-time. A scrambled effort forced in by Mark Falco. Watch for some real class from Matthew Letizier. Stay scout, bemused in the Rangers' goal. Now, Stayskal has led in 11 in four matches. He's getting precious little protection. Rod Wallace, 3-1 to the Saints. Joe Venglosh signed a new, improved contract at Villa before the Midlands derby against Forest, and in all respects, Villa put their disappointing performance in Milan behind them. England new boy Tony Daly with a twisting run. Ian Olney brought down by Steve Chettle. Graham Taylor was actually there to see David Platt fail to get his 11th of the season. Mark Crossley reading his intentions from the spot and Stuart Pearce clearing. But Cowens it was who sent over the resulting corner and after an almighty scramble, Kent Nielsen forced it in for his first in the league this season and Villa's first in the league after almost six hours play. Now, Forrest's reply was brilliant. Nigel Clough with a slide rule pass to Franz Carr who beat Spink without breaking stride. But Villa still unbeaten at home. Manchester United, Britain's sole survivors in Europe, probably had the better of things at the baseball ground, but couldn't translate that superiority into goals. Lee Sharp set up the best chance for Neil Webb, 
but somehow Peter Shilton and the rest of the Derby defence kept it out. A solo goal here by Dale Gordon. It took nothing more than that to bamboozle the Chelsea defence. Gordon using the space to gain full advantage of his fancy footwork. Chelsea's equaliser came from a penalty conceded by Norwich's Ian Butterworth after Wise had burst through. The replay doesn't prove anything conclusively, but you can appreciate why the referee thought he'd made the right decision. Wise's penalty, only one defeat in 11 games for Chelsea. They don't lose a lot, but they don't win enough. Howard Kendall was back in the Everton hot seat for the Merseysiders' visit to Bramall Lane. Kendall returned to the club he guided to two league titles and three FA Cup finals after an absence of three years. But no instant remedy to Everton's poor run in the league, which could easily have been extended. But for some fine goalkeeping from Neville Southall. A wicked swerve of that one from Carl Bradshaw. Well, Stuart McCall almost earned Everton and Howard Kendall three points. His shot, though, crashed off the Sheffield United crossbar. It always looked like a draw, this one. United must be getting increasingly desperate for that first win. Not the best of matches, this one at Roker, in difficult conditions. Grizovic distinguished himself in the Coventry goal with a flying save from Davenport. And the Sunderland keeper, Tim Carter, proved he could do just as well. With a good block from Brian Borrows. The keepers won the day, the match finished goalless. Now Sterling. It's interesting that Leeds are using a similar tactic to Man City. They're directing every ball at Lee Chapman looking for the likes of shot and uh, speedy speed to get the knockdowns from him the two of, i'm sure chapman and quinn will feature quite a bit in this game mcallister again has drifted away from his marker and that's a dangerous looking pass and it's gone in from chapman manchester city were caught asleep quickly taken free kick by city poynton and there was definitely a foul then and the referee in fact has given a penalty White pushed Quinn away from the ball with his elbow and the referee was perfectly placed to award a penalty and I must say I totally agree with Mr Deakin's decision and somewhat surprisingly Mark Ward who scored three times from the spot for Manchester City this season will not be taking it the role has gone instead to Alan Harper the former Everton man Oh dear! City's miserable week continues with an embarrassing penalty miss by Alan Harper. There's a foul by Quinn, but the referee has indeed whistled. Ten is McAllister, eleven speed. Strachan is the number seven, and Mel Sterling, the other Leeds United player. All of them around the ball. Sterling probably favourite to have the crack at goal. And he does, and it deflects, and shot it onto it. Good save, shot again. It's gone in, has it? It has now. Leeds United get a second in the dying moments of the half. And Carl Schutt's reaction then was superb. Henry. Lovely ball again for White. Quinn and Heath in the middle for the cross. And Quinn was definitely barged in the back. It's another penalty. Sterling the offender this time. And the referee again was perfectly placed to see it. And the man who has scored already three times from the spot this season, Mark Ward, will resume his duties as chief penalty taker. And it's gone in, albeit off the post. And Manchester City are back in the picture. Redmond there again to clear. Harper. Ward. Kamara with the interception. 
Batty takes over for Leeds. Now Strachan to Chapman. That's a good return ball. And Strachan's onside. Carl Schott arriving on the far side of the penalty area. He didn't need him. What a marvellous finish. Gordon Strachan with an absolutely exquisite goal. Good turn by Megson. Reed, how they need his inspirational qualities now. Point and playing it forward. White gets in. They don't know the meaning of defeat at Manchester City. They won't lie down.